Good morning. The Wab Canoe is here for our regular Thanks for having me interview. back. Uh, you know what? It was supposed to be our last question in our interview, but Michelle's here. We're thinking about this. Uh, and, and so my, why don't I make it our first question, Premier? What, what, what for you, uh, when you think about today, National Indigenous Peoples Day, what or whom are you thinking about today uh, when you're celebrating? Well, I was trying to think about young people. I think uh, just generally in politics, I'm always trying to think about how can we make things better for young people and, and have more opportunity. So on National Indigenous Peoples Day, I think one of the really amazing opportunities we have in Manitoba right now is to celebrate Indigenous culture and to say that that celebration of Indigenous culture doesn't need to be limited to Indigenous peoples, much like Michelle just said. So for sure, it can be a point of pride for young people who are going through school and thinking about their future careers and having a positive life. But I hope that everybody recognizes that we live in uh, Manitoba, Canada. Manitoba is named by the Ojibwe language. Canada is named by the Huron, Iroquois language. And so some part of your identity, whether you're Indigenous or not, as a Manitoba and as a Canadian, is formed by Indigenous cultures. So positive day for everyone to, to take pride in. Let's switch gears here at 7.46 a.m. Wab Canoe live in studio with us on CBC for our monthly interview, which means we're going to cover a number of topics. I want to lean into something that obviously was uh, was developing yesterday. You were part, uh, Premier, of a technical briefing on the search of the Prairie Green Landfill. So there have been a lot of uh, details now shared about what uh, you know the search is going to entail. Uh, but I'm wondering at the end of this, what does success look like to you? And I, I, I use that word gently. Um, it's the wrong word, but but but, but can you sort of can you elaborate on, on what you're thinking there? And you know, you're totally right to think about how do we talk about this in a compassionate way because yeah. we're talking about families who've been put through so much. First of all, that they lost a loved one, and really, to me, I think. The first big thing that I want the search uh, to represent for the broader public is on this issue, on this issue which has become so uh, scrutinized and reported on, not just by the Canadian media, but even internationally, I want Manitobans to say, when the rest of the country was watching, when the rest of the world was watching, Manitoba sent a message uh, together that this is a place where everyone matters, and when someone goes missing, we go looking. And I think that we're now fulfilling that uh, part of it. And then when we narrow in onto these two families who've been so impacted, uh, the family of Morgan Harris, the family of Mercedes Myron, we are going to try and bring their loved ones home. We're gonna try and bring the remains home. That would be uh, the first uh, part of the mission that we're trying to accomplish. We can't guarantee success. We may not be able to deliver on that. So if we're able to show them that we do value them and their loved one, that we do accord them dignity, that we are serious about uh, you know, trying to do our best to, to have them have a path forward to, to, to grieve in a good way. To me, that will be some measure of, um, of a, a next step that we can all agree on here. Let's turn to politics, uh, civic politics, actually. Uh, I want to play you a clip of Mayor Scott Gillingham. He was here yesterday for his monthly interview. Uh, he responded to some concerns from nonprofit groups and community. Uh, many of them work with inner city youth. They say they're worried about a planned city cut to community grant programs. They say it'll be dangerous. But this is part of our exchange that involves the province. The city of Winnipeg was not really uh, on the front lines of homelessness and housing. We have been drawn into that. We are now doing that. That used to be primarily provincial responsibility. We now give out grants to groups like the 24-7 safe spaces where we never gave out grants before. People might not be able to square why now you would look at cutting the grants unless this is a political push to the province to say we can't do it financially anymore, you've got to step up and do it. Well, in, in, in part, for sure, we, we need more assistance from, uh, you know, from the province of Manitoba. I'm hoping that some of the conversations that we're having with the province will assist the city of Winnipeg and make sure we're, we're back into the lane that is our jurisdiction. How do you view this issue, Premier? Has the city been taking on too much financial responsibility for housing and homelessness? Should your government be offering relief to uh, allow the city, as the mayor put it, to get back to its civic uh, jurisdiction as he sees it? Well, our administration is taking strong action on homelessness and housing. There's $117 million for social housing and affordable housing in the budget. And right now, as we speak, we are working with City Hall, the mayor, Downtown Biz, Osborne Village Biz, Save Peace Walkers, DCSP. Which he, is, which he said, I should say, yesterday. Yeah, yeah that and you guys to, are talking, you are doing that, yeah. 
And more than talking, action, like an additional stage of response. I think everyone sees what's happening in downtown, other parts of Winnipeg, other parts of the province, and knows that we need to do more. And I can tell you that in the next uh, couple of weeks, you're going to see that additional stage of response. I think part of what the mayor's frustration is that the previous government did not take these issues seriously on addictions, on homelessness. So perhaps the city... Uh, was forced to step up and uh, cover the shortcomings of the previous government. But th this is a new day. We're taking a new approach. We're taking strong, decisive action on this. And we have that commitment to do better by homelessness and to do better for people living with addictions. Uh, does it mean money, though? What's your response I'm, to the, yeah. I'm just the nonprofit groups I mentioned? They might be worried if the city grant cuts happen and they're left without funding. If it, you know, will you commit to step in? Well, we have to see the details of what's being talked about first, like on the specific level. But on the highest level, what I would say is this. I think Manitobans have generally responded well to the message we've been saying, which is tough on crime, tough on the causes of crime. So we know that we need the Winnipeg Police Service, RCMP, other law enforcement agencies to be visible and to be a part of the conversation around safety. But we also know that in order to get where we want to go on this, we need to address the root causes. Some of that's addictions and mental health issues, but some of that's recreation for kids. Some of that's a meal program in schools. So we're taking action in these areas, and I think in order for us to truly be successful in moving the ball forward on a topic like homelessness or uh, public safety, we need to continue to invest in the work that these agencies do, these non-for-profits that you're talking about. Uh, because you're raising sort of that bigger issue, I also want to ask you now about crime stats. They came out this week from the Winnipeg Police Service. We know violent crimes up, youth crimes up, property crimes are concerned. We're in a moment right now. We're about to have a new police chief yeah. uh, named. Yep. Um, as a province, just so people can understand, there are jurisdictional issues, but as a province, you're responsible for the Police Services Act. So in 2020, under the PCs, there was an independent review. There were 70 recommendations. Do you know where we're at with those recommendations, or do you have further plans to review the act? Like other provinces, like Ontario, are blowing it up. They're saying it might take us five years, but we're reimagining all of how policing is done. I wonder what your thinking is around all of this as a premier. Well, uh, I can tell you we're taking a different approach from the previous government. There's a lot of jurisdictional squabbling and basically just uh, grandstanding uh, at the podium without a lot, a lot of action. We're trying to do the opposite. We're trying to do the work and then we can worry about the press conferences and stuff like that later. So when it comes to the question of law enforcement, I would say we've taken, we're trying to take a comprehensive approach. So on the one hand, we are adding more resources for law enforcement. On the issue of retail theft, which, you know, your listeners and yourself yeah. were engaged in over the past few weeks, rightfully, rightfully so, we've added those additional resources for more units, for more units to go to the, the hot spots as determined by uh, the data that the police have, including the information that was uh, released this week. At the same time, though, We've heard from the Winnipeg Police Service and other law enforcement agencies themselves that we're not going to arrest our way out of challenges like homelessness, like addictions. And so we know that there needs to be that additional layer of response. And so what we're working on with the support of these organizations like DSC or DCSP, Sabe Peace Walkers, is to have an additional layer of response after police and after fire paramedics so that there can be that one-to-one -one culturally relevant, peer-informed outreach to people who are really struggling. And then, and this is really important at the provincial level, to have that backed up with a healthcare approach, a mental health approach. So we're not just trying to see somebody in crisis and say, hey, move along. We're trying to come up to somebody in crisis and say, hey, can we talk about the supports that you need to address a problematic substance use, an addictions issue? Can we work on the mental health issues? Can we talk about housing? Are all of those groups sitting down right now, like the Winnipeg Police Service, those grassroots groups? Are, are you at the point where you're gathering them all together to look at how we work together in this province in a different way then? Is that already happening? We're engaging with all those folks, and I want to give really... Are they engaging with each other, though? Yes. And uh, I want to say, you know, who deserves a lot of credit in these conversations are the biz organizations. Downtown Biz, Osborne Village Biz, West Broad Bay 
is and so on. I've been really impressed at the amount of thinking and data analysis that these biz groups have been doing to say that, you know what, we want downtown, we want these other neighborhoods to be safer, and not just safe from the perspective of, uh, you know, public safety and issues like that, but we want people to come down and have these areas thrive and have that creative vitality that excites so many Manitobans when they visit. So I do have to ask you this. Well, I appreciate your comprehensive answer at the bigger, wider view. Um, the 70 recommendations then in the Police Services Act, you said you're not going to follow the lead of the previous government. Do you have your government, do you have plans to further review the act itself? Well, when I talk about the approach of the previous government, I'm talking more about when you saw fights being picked between the well, ledge and the Well, I appreciate the city change hall. there. Uh, you've drawn the distinction between your right. governments. And but are so, you going to re review the act? Because you could say yes, no, or I don't know. But Well, part of that is with the civil service. But what we're doing now is we're taking action. We're saying within the existing rule set, within the existing framework that we have right now, how can we complement the work that law enforcement is doing? And what's been identified for us is, hey, we need detox and mental health services to help with the addictions crisis. And we need another layer of responders on the street, which we have to some degree with these DCSP and Sabe type foot patrols. But they need more resources to be able to match the need that's out there in the community. You alluded to something that's going to be announced soon. Uh, can you give us any inkling about what you're going to announce to, to that end? That well, will fill that, that will add to that layer you're talking about? Yeah, it is law enforcement and foot patrols being the very present response in the first instance and then having an additional layer of detox, well-being, mental health supports built in immediately right there so that there's not an hour and a half wait for the foot patrol person to be able to get that person in crisis into the mental health health care setting. We want to be able to mm. connect that right away. So, um, I will ask you a political question because it was a historic win this week for your party in Tuxedo. Uh, and NEP MLA now represents that riding for the first time since it was created since the 1980s. How will you make sure the people in, in Tuxedo feel heard and represented by the NDP? Uh, those that feel maybe still unsteady, thinking four, four decades is a long time to be with another party, and now we've gone with, uh, you know, the NDP? Well, I think the way that our candidate won, Carla Compton, an amazing candidate, a nurse, tons of emotional intelligence. I watched her connect with, with voters. The way that she won the seat was by putting in the hard work and showing the humility to listen and to say, you know what, I am going to bring forward your important concerns or address the questions that you're bringing forward. And I think if Carla continues to do that and if our team continues to come forward with a balanced approach, it's, you know, moderate on financial issues, but moving forward on topics like the landfill search and community safety across the province, then I'm hopeful that not only in Tuxedo, but right across Manitoba, people are going to continue to say, you know what, this is a good direction that we can all move forward in. We're one Manitoba. Premier of Manitoba, Wab Canoe, live on CBC. Thank you very much for your time this morning. Thanks for having me back. Premier of Manitoba, uh, in our regular monthly interview, he is here each and every month. And uh, I mentioned this when the mayor was on yesterday as well. Uh, both leaders uh, open to uh, your questions and comments and concerns. So call our listener line at 788-3205 uh, if you have some of those and they could work their way into future conversations.